Everybody wakes up in the morning and they are pelted with alerts that frighten them, news that agitates them. With this show, we have the time to explain what's going on. These migrants, they've been released. Explain the status that allows them to be released, to slow things down a little bit. What are the big sets of questions for China and its ambitions? Hackers are stepping up their attacks to extort victims. Let's start with easy. Who's attacking? Here's a deeper understanding of what's happening. Prime Time with John Dickerson. Stream on the free CBS News app. You ready? A generation of kids opens up on CBS Reports. I just want to be like a regular kid. Their world, their struggles, their voices. What if I was white? A lot of people like to call names and make you feel ashamed for being proud of who you are. Now streaming the internet. Technology is baked into the DNA of our generation. Social media, apps, and games. I like my iPad, my phone, my Nintendo. Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, it's one click away. Is growing up digital a blessing or a curse? There is so much pressure to be perfect. We need to have conversations regarding healthier usage. Are the kids all right? The internet, now streaming on the free CBS News app. On our places, right shiny faces. When you wake up in the morning, we want to be your go-to team. I don't go to work in the morning. I go for coffee with my two good friends. is still undecided on who will be the chamber's next speaker. And we're gonna we're gonna continue to talk and we'll find an agreement. Uh, whether or not he's speaker, it's very really clear that that position has already been significantly weakened. My hat is in the ring to try to you know, get there. It's a job that I would do reluctantly. There's no urgency, uh, in my opinion. What we saw was the true character of the modern day Republican Party, obsessed with power and their own personal advancement. The U.S. House of Representatives, one of two chambers in the legislative branch of our federal government, exists in name only on this day in American history. It cannot carry out any of its constitutional mandates to raise revenue or spend revenue. It cannot conduct oversight. Why? Because it can't organize itself. Why? Because it has no speaker. Welcome to Red and Blue. I'm Major Garrett from Washington. Thank you so much for joining us. The House has adjourned without electing a speaker. Republican Congressman Kevin McCarthy of California failed to gather enough votes through three more rounds of voting today, leaving the position and the House of Representatives at large in a stalemate. As many as 20 conservative Republican holdouts continued to reject McCarthy's bid to become House Speaker. McCarthy vowed to keep fighting. This marks the first time in one century that the House has failed to elect a speaker on the first ballot. Scott McFarland joins us now from Capitol Hill. Scott, of course, is a CBS News congressional correspondent, and he spent the entire day, this entire historic day in the House gallery, watching as closely as humanly possible. Scott, your impressions. A major, just a few moments ago, I spoke with two key McCarthy allies, Dan Crenshaw of Texas and Dan Webster of Florida, and they didn't just exude pessimism. They were oozing pessimism coming off that sixth vote. Congressman Webster says there is no indication of what he's seen so far through two marathon days. Anything is going to change the fortunes for the better for Kevin McCarthy. And Dan Crenshaw said he simply doesn't trust this group of 20, these 20 defectors anymore. In a narrow margin U.S. House major, any degree of acrimony can really paralyze things. They have in the past 48 hours ratcheted up the level of acrimony to a new level. Crenshaw says this is certainly going to impact this House majority moving forward, and that's if this ends anytime soon. Scott, do you see uh, any indication from either those two Dans you talked to, Crenshaw or Webster, or those closest in McCarthy's inner circle that he is wavering at all, or he's going to stick with this, and as he vowed to the conference yesterday, not go away? What we've heard is them equivocate about strategy, not about whether it's going to be Kevin McCarthy they continue to nominate. Will they make outreach to Democrats, as inconceivable as that seems? And though the game theory doesn't seem to line up for me about that, 
Uh, Congressman Bacon of Omaha said they may have to do outreach, offer sweeteners or concessions to Democrats to pull some of their votes. At this moment, that feels like fan fiction. Um, there's been concern about how extended this will be, but really it feels just like a retirement. You aren't retired until you say you're retired. You're not thinking about retirement until you say you're retired. They're not thinking about an alternative until they must declare an alternative. I think any talk of McCarthy stepping back or stepping down is happening very quietly behind the scenes if it's truly happening. Scott, I quite agree with your fan fiction description of the potential of engaging Democrats in serious negotiations, at least for the better part of this week. What I'm more curious about is whether or not there is pressure on McCarthy to rescind some of the concessions he's made to those hardline conservative Republicans and tell them, hey, not only am I not going away, but the deal gets worse each and every day. Essentially say, I negotiated with you in good faith. You have not reciprocated in kind. And the first step toward me possibly thinking about dealing with Democrats is to rescind some of the compromises I extended in your direction. Yeah, spot on. In fact, two of his close allies told me just that, including Congressman Bacon, who said the next step should be to pull back the concessions offered and try to plow forward. They're arguing McCarthy still has one singularly impactful and important piece of leverage. He is the only Republican conference member according to his allies, who has even a conceivable trajectory towards 218 votes. Think of the conceivable alternatives that have been offered, be it Byron Donalds or Jim Jordan. No pathway to them getting 218 votes. For every House Freedom Caucus member you score with one of those alternative nominees, you may lose the moderates, including these newly elected moderates from places like suburban New York City, suburban Detroit, in California. So McCarthy still wields that leverage, but it has been wildly unhelpful over the first six votes. And Scott, I want to talk to you about something that is at the rubber meets the road part of House interaction with the broader public. These members are not sworn in, meaning there is no way they can carry out even the most basic constituent service until that happens. So if you have a question, for your member of Congress about some local issue or a passport or some benefits question, there's literally nobody there to help you. That's right. And one of the top House Democrats mentioned that during a news conference today. They're trying to lean into that point, that this standoff does have a real-world impact on constituent services, be it your veterans benefit, your Social Security check, your passport, or some specific need from a local citizen to the federal government, in which U.S. House members serve as an intermediary. These constituents still have senators, and those who've been in office already, those who are returning to Congress, have the apparatus and the staff and the relationships to quickly remedy that once this standoff ends. But for the newly elected, it really is a problem getting started. Those first few weeks are pivotal, and they're already getting a delayed start. And I'll also mention one other point. It's always possible if this goes for too long, it could be a disruption in the salaries, the pay for political figures. That's an incentive. That's quite an incentive. Scott McFarlane, we're indebted to you always, but especially on a historic day such as today. Thanks so much. For more, Nebraska Republican Congressman Don Bacon joins us now. Congressman, how are you, sir, and what is your takeaway from day two of the marathon that seemingly has no end? Well, thank you, Garrett. Thanks for having me on. I sure enjoyed the discussion you were having because I thought it was very, it was very accurate with what was being said. Uh, my first observation is we should be at work. We could have already passed three sets of bills, part of the commitment to America, and we're on hold. Part of our agenda has now been derailed. We could have already manned our committees and started to work on the things that we promised our citizens about energy independence, better security at the border, and all the things that we've talked about, that is on hold. At some point, the staffers in our professional committees will stop getting paid. And so this is a, a blemish, and that's, I'm understating it for the Republican Party, but it's caused by these 20 individuals who refuse to be part of a team. And, that's, and it's very dissatisfying. They are hurting the team. And if I may, if I could back up a little bit more, they were offered every single concession up until last Monday that they asked for, and they said no. They were given every single concession and couldn't get to yes, in other words. Now, Monday night they came in and demanded a committee chairmanships and more seats on the Approves Committee, the Ways and Means Committee, and the Budget Committee, or not Budget Committee, the uh, Rules Committee. 
And that's just unpalatable. They went too far. They were trying to fulfill their self-interests, and it, it, it hurts the whole team. So today we are derailed for 9% of the conference. And I hope they open up their eyes and realize they got to be part of a team and join the team back. Uh, Congressman, feel free to call me Major. That's my first name. Um, you called the 20 Republicans who have yet to vote for Kevin McCarthy the Taliban 20. One of them, Matt Gates, considered that a badge of honor. That seems to be pretty heated rhetoric. I imagine in private it's even more heated. It seems to me from the distance, sir, mm -hmm. this is getting more intense, not less intense. Yeah, there was intense feelings yesterday, particularly coming out of the conference meeting, because it became clear to us these folks cannot get to yes. They're used to being on the minority. They'd rather be on the minority because they could just be no and oppose everything. But Kevin McCarthy negotiated in a good faith effort and gave literally every concession they asked for up until Monday, and they said no. And, and I didn't personally call them the Taliban 20. Someone asked me, what are you hearing behind the closed doors? I said, I heard that term being used. I personally, I'm not a good, I don't really believe in the name calling side of it. But the fact is some people were using those terms. And, but they should do some self-reflection. They have derailed the Republican conference. They've derailed the House. They've given a bad name to Republicans, to citizens all over this country. And I hope they reconsider what they're doing. Do you want the speaker, not the speaker, but uh, the speaker potential, Kevin McCarthy, to rescind some of those concessions he made? I know some allies of his are saying, you negotiated in good faith, they did not respond in kind. Pull those concessions and let those renegades know the deal will only get worse the longer this goes. Now, there are some con concessions made that we all actually like, so we, we should keep what we like. So we think there were some things that made, like single subject bill legislation and things like that, but there are a couple areas we do not like. I'll give you one, this five chair to vacate. We already voted in the conference to make it half of the conference, which is 111 seats, or 111 uh, votes. They, they took it down to five based on their demand, and we really don't like that. We don't want five people to threaten the speaker on every vote, hey, we're gonna do a vacate the chair and try to oust our speaker. That, that makes for a weak speaker, it weakens the comp the, the House weakens the Republican Party here in the House. Secondly, they're demanding a certain level of participation of Freedom Caucus people in various committees and as in chairmanships. We see that as sort of like an affirmative action for the Freedom Caucus. These chairmanships and some of these committees are merit-based. You get them based on being a team player, how much work you do, how you help others, your expertise. No one should just get it because they're demanding it. And to get it to say, we will only vote for you, Kevin McCarthy, if you make us a, a chairman, is really a terrible thing to say. And Congressman, should Kevin McCarthy be open to the prospect of negotiating with Democrats if they are willing to negotiate a path for him to be elevated to speaker? Yes, Major, I think the first thing that we need to do though is put more pressure on these, on these 20 folks. Uh, I think there's, you see more and more conservative commentators on TV and radio, and they're saying, hey, these folks are, are to blame, they're hurting the party, they're hurting the country. So I think there's going to be more and more pressure on these folks, and they need, to, they need to feel it. But at some point, I believe Kevin and the team needs to reach out and see, okay, what, what areas of cooperation can we do with the Democrats, whether it's committee ratios, whether it's some changes in the rules. There's a lot of areas that we could explore where we could get more, a more bipartisan agreement and go that way. We don't want the, these 20 people to think they're the only door that we have to get out. We need to present another door that we can take and cut them out of this if need be. Real quickly, Congressman, on a scale of one to 10 percentage wise, a percentage that this gets resolved tonight. I think very low. I think this, five, could, this five could be a battle sounds of, like. 10 percent, how's that? But. This is going to be a battle of wills. These other folks, the 20 think they can wear us down. They're messing with the wrong guy with me. I just want to encourage Kevin McCarthy to stay strong and don't back down. You can't back down to people who don't negotiate in good faith. Nebraska Republican Congressman Don Bacon, thank you so very much for your time, sir. Thank you. Well, as you've heard and as we've discussed, six rounds of voting simply not enough to decide who will take the title of Speaker of the House. Stalemate is putting congressional action, all of it, on hold after the break. What comes next and what is shaping up, well, it's already been a historic speaker confrontation. You're streaming Red and Blue.
original documentary from CBS reports tensions rising between a powerful country and a vital island. The supply of this technology came grinding to a halt. The world would grind to a halt. Absolutely. As Taiwan faces threats and aggression, Taiwan is on the front line, and we understand our responsibility as a democracy. We cannot fall. CBS News examines whether they can defend themselves. Putin, Ukraine, China, Taiwan, they are manifestations of the battle between autocracy and democracy. And that is a fight that we're all engaged in. Defending Taiwan, now streaming on the free CBS News app. When weather turns extreme, states from the plains to the northeast are bracing for more than two feet of heavy snow. Every second counts. This is a monster winter storm. CBS News and the Weather Channel bring you virtual weather technology so advanced, so real. There's a wrinkle in the forecast, the accumulating ice. Oh! You'll have time to get prepared. Take precautions before you head out. Feel the forecast on the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. Stories that inform. Or you can be really old at 60, and you can be really young at 85. Inspire. How do we unlock the power within ourselves to be who we want to be? And brighten your day. The best part of fame is making people feel good. Always send the people home happy. Make every day a little more like Sunday morning. Here comes the sun. Stream now on the free CBS News app. An original documentary from CBS reports. The carnage in our nation's schools has become painfully repetitive. Not one more child! School shootings have parents fighting mad. I promised my daughter I was going to fight. This is going to keep on happening. And teachers taking lessons in how to fight back. This is an exercise. We approach it as it's you or them. It shouldn't have to be your teacher's job to protect your life. But will the battle over gun control? People are afraid that they're going to lose their gun rights altogether. Be the hardest lesson of all. The exercise, you're having to shoot at an adult. Are you prepared to have to kill one of your students? Mm. Guns in the Classroom, now streaming on the free CBS News app. Welcome back to Red and Blue. I'm Major Garrett. The House stalemate continues. Without a speaker, there is no functioning House. That is the saga in Washington. It is gripping the capital city in ways that uh, can only be described as historic. For more on all of this, I want to bring in my trusted CBS News colleagues from Capitol Hill. Ed O'Keefe, of course, is our senior White House and political correspondent, Caitlin Huey Burns, our political correspondent, and Robert Costa is our chief election and campaign correspondent. I want to play for all three of you another one of our colleagues, Nicole Killian's conversation with Byron Donalds, who was placed in nomination for speaker today and on numerous votes, got at least 20 votes. Let's hear what Nicole asked and what Byron Donald said about what he wants. I mean, what is it that you want? <laughs> well, I think one of the key things is, is that, you know, we have a lot of Republicans that have worked hard to come here on Capitol Hill, and they've made a lot of, you know, uh, campaign promises to their voters, the people that have sent them here to their constituents. And so what we don't want to see a repeat of is the same old Washington. Same old Washington. Well, that is a moniker that has been hung around the neck of Kevin McCarthy. It has been an impediment to him obtaining the speakership. Bob Costa, you're on Capitol Hill. Your thoughts and observations on the day that continues to play out before our eyes. Good to be with you, Major, and our other colleagues. Right now, the House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, is meeting with his critics in a private room on the second floor of the Capitol trying to get them to yes. I'm told that behind the scenes, according to people familiar with the meeting, things like committee chairmanships are not necessarily on the table but being discussed. Subcommittee chairmanships. Could some of these House Freedom Caucus members be put on the steering committee, which decides how committees are organized. This is very inside the ba base, inside baseball in terms of political negotiations. But this is what's going on right now. McCarthy's trying to have an open discussion with his harshest critics to see if there is anything that could bring them to yes at 8 o'clock Eastern tonight when the House reconvenes. But, Bob, as you well know, Doing those kinds of things might jeopardize part of the McCarthy coalition that is held tough for him through these six votes, meaning those House Republicans who don't want him to concede anymore and who don't want Freedom Caucus members to leapfrog other rank and file members and get these coveted either subcommittee 
chairmanships or steering committee positions, which increase their clout disproportionate to what they believe either their loyalty track record is or their own personal accomplishments are. Major, you are spot on. And so what McCarthy and his allies are trying to do is see if there is a sweet spot in these negotiations. If Congressman Gates from Florida, a, a real critic of McCarthy, wants a subcommittee chairmanship, maybe that's a, a step too far, putting Gates as a subcommittee chairman on the Armed Services Committee. But Andy Barr, a close ally of Kevin McCarthy, has been floating to the critics a, a proposal where the Freedom Caucus would have a seat on the steering committee. That means they would have a seat at the table permanently when committees are organized. And what Barr and other McCarthy allies are trying to do right now behind the scenes is, is see if the Freedom Caucus is brought into the Rules Committee, brought into the steering committee, which decides the committee, the Rules Committee runs the floor itself. If they have a, a real seat, a permanent designation, on those particular committees, could that be enough? Because as you said, so many rank and file, more centrist members, regular Republicans who are with McCarthy, won't love the idea of the opponents getting a plum position, a subcommittee chairmanship, just for opposing McCarthy. Caitlin, you heard Don Bacon tell me a moment ago, 10% chance of this getting resolved tonight. Is that how it feels to you? Well, we have seen that this is a conference that has tried the same thing over and over again. Three times, in fact, today. We have been here through all of it uh, with the same result. And what's the definition of insanity? I mean, that is something that has being talked about here. Um, whether there are going to be all of these concessions made and met by 8 o'clock, uh, that appears unlikely. The question is kind of whether he can peel off any or at least show some kind of progress because that's something that we haven't seen McCarthy do today. Heading into today, we were wondering if he could peel off some of these members, even get some of them to just vote present. Instead, this is a coalition that stayed together, st uh, stood together, um, and actually added to its ranks in the form of one congresswoman from Indiana voting present. Um, so he has not been able to show progress this far. And Ed, you've covered the House, I've covered the House, so has Caitlin, so has Bob. The House matters. It's institutionally significant within the construct of our legislative branch. It is now inert. It does not exist in any formal sense. Is that on the minds of these members? I mean, I, I was struck today by a few things Congressman Donald said to Nicole. First of all, I think he did a far sweepier job of explaining to America what's going on here. He said, Washington, as you know, it is broken. Okay, that makes sense. I think if you took a poll, most Americans would agree. Then you talk to Don Bacon, who got almost too specific with you about what specifically this is about, the motion to vacate, which is, in essence, a no-confidence vote on the speaker. Uh, who gets to sit on the steering committee or, you know, the biggest seat at the table, the biggest table which has seats right now because you determine who sits on what committee and what legislation comes up and what are the general themes of the caucus. Okay, that's harder for Americans to understand. But Donald's also said something, Nicole, that I'm wondering about as we think about the broader politics of this. He says, look, our kids went to school today, the lights turned on, the banks were open, you know, the nation was safe and secure. If this body has to take a few extra days to sort itself out, it's not the end of the world. It's not a crisis, right? We know the Senate's gone until January 23rd. There's no legislation that's going to get passed between now and then that must be passed unless there's some unforeseen crisis. There's no big oversight committee investigation that will be held by Republicans by then because the White House is telling Republicans, you've got to resubmit requests for information and we're not going to talk to you until you've done that and we get a chance to respond in kind. So in essence, what he's saying is let's take that time out. Let's have this conversation. Let's see where it goes. And I'll be curious going into tonight, going into tomorrow, if this can persists, whether the rest of the country agrees with Donald's or grows concerned about this chaos and something we haven't seen in 100 years. A key question, will this be a confrontation or an intra-party confrontation? Ed O'Keefe, Caitlin Huey Burns, Bob Costa, thanks so very much. With the speakership still undecided, the Republican Party is facing increased scrutiny as it prepares to take over leadership of that body. Up next, we're taking a closer look at the big picture for the Republican Party. It's been a rocky start. You're streaming Red and Blue.
an original CBS Reports documentary. Yoga and wellness has become a place of anti-science. Online clickbait. The algorithms feed you content based upon your own fantasy. Potentially at my peril. There's no question about it. Spreading digital disinformation. Their entire yoga studio and spiritual community got so embedded in all of the QAnon stuff that it became this sick place. Why pro-health people are fertile ground for anti-science messages. We can just go into the whole mask thing. A lot of us just believe that's symbolism for silencing people. People are locked in this mindset. They've been taught to accept what the medical doctors say. No longer are you going to be willing to take any medical advice. It's a big problem that we urgently need to address. An original CBS Reports documentary streaming now. An original CBS Reports documentary. We need to put an end to this territorial status. Will statehood create a better Puerto Rico? So that we have the same quality of life that you see in the States. What do you worry about? Me living here in the future. They're giving incentives to non-Puerto Ricans to come to Puerto Rico. And extract our natural resources and take over our land. Vacation in Puerto Rico, and in exchange for that, you don't pay taxes. Why would I allow somebody who abused me for 123 years to then consume me? An original CBS Reports documentary, streaming now. People from every corner of America facing challenges. Everyone is just looking for some type of connection. Just raise your hand and say, hey, I'd like to help. Coming together to find solutions. We are going to do something about it. Their stories okay. are our stories. Welcome to Eye on America. Stream now on the free CBS News app. After decades in the public eye and public service, this mother-daughter duo is now talking about gutsy women. What's the gutsiest thing you've ever done? We go person to person with Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton and Chelsea Clinton. Now streaming on the free CBS News app. Stories that inform, inspire, and brighten your day. I've been waiting patiently for something like this. Make every day a little more like Sunday morning. Here comes the sun. Stream on the free CBS News app Tuesday mornings. Welcome back to Red and Blue. I'm Major Garrett. Yes, the House is still stuck. There is no speaker. Six rounds for those counting at home, a vote, and still no resolution. The House will reconvene 8 p.m. Eastern tonight. Kevin Matten joins me here at the desk. He is a senior partner, that's really important, with Penta Group and a former advisor to 2012 Republican nominee Mitt Romney and also a veteran of lots of offices on Capitol Hill, among mm -hmm. them John Boehner's when he was speaker. Yeah. So, Kevin, give me a simple explanation of what the country is watching. Well, you know, the, 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 the funny thing is the discipline that is needed to sort of run a rather orderly House of Representatives in normal times under normal circumstances where things like this are routine um, are usually driven by the fact that members have a very conscious focus on getting the work of the House done and also um, recognizing that they have a, a role to play in the structure of an orderly House when it comes to committee assignments and um, bills that they want to prioritize and an agenda that they want to prioritize. What's very different here is that the band of people that are holdouts, they are not governed by that same gravitational pull. They are much more focused on confronting leadership and sending a message to the base that they're the vehicle for base frustrations with the establishment in Washington. So that is the most, I think that's the most distilled version of why we're seeing what we're seeing today, is that all the old norms are gone. And yet, Kevin, I saw people on the House floor today speaking on Kevin McCarthy's behalf, who when they got to Washington were, in their own words, vanguards of anti-establishment conservatism. And they're now with Kevin right. McCarthy, arguing with their putative allies, saying, you're the ones who are out of touch. Yeah. That's and confusing. It, it, to it me. is. And I think the genesis of their sort of, uh, you know, uh, interest in coming to Washington to be a representative was that, that they were going to, you know, fight, take, you know, take on the process and fight it. And then they realized that one of the ways that you get things done is working together, working across the aisle, focusing on uh, incremental change. And um, you learn that by experience. And um, also that if you want to make a big difference, that you sort of have to play within, uh, not play within, but like, but work towards a uh, consensus. And so that was what would govern them. And here um, you're seeing a bunch of holdouts that just don't have the same understanding of those principles.
principles. One of the uh, cliches of political journalism is to fall back on sports metaphors. I'm going to be very <laughs> cliched here for a moment and say you can't win a Super Bowl if your guards and tackles suddenly want to play like tight ends. You can't. <laughs> you have to stay in your lane, do your job, function within the way the team is oriented to achieve its goal. Yeah, and it's and that doesn't mean selling out. Um, it also doesn't mean that um, you sort of buy into a process that you don't believe in. It means that the only way you have an, a, 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 um, a, a process or an institution like the House, the only way you get it to work is by driving towards consensus. And what we're seeing right and now— And by exercising the will of yeah, the majority. Right. And what we're seeing right now is that you have to have 218 votes to get anything done. And so if you're going to hold out 20, all we're going to have to do is a stare down and have the same vote over and over. And that's why it's looked like you use the sports analogy. I'll use the movie analogy. That's why right now we look like we're caught in a rerun of the movie Groundhog Day. Mm-hmm. Yet yeah, that was an existential exploration of self that led to a better result. We'll see if that happens this time. Kevin, Kevin Madden, thanks so much for being with us. Great I think that concludes what we're doing here at Red and Blue. The prompter will tell me in a moment. Yes, that does it. Yes, yeah, I see it there. That does it for today. Please, prompter operator, keep on moving. You can stream Red and Blue Monday to Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. And here is a quick reminder. If... Please keep going. If you want to watch previous episodes of this program, you can see them anytime on the CBS News website. All you have to do is head to cbsnews.com slash red and blue. Everybody wakes up in the morning and they are pelted with alerts that frighten them, news that agitates them. With this show, we have the time to explain what's going on. These migrants, they've been released. Explain the status that allows them to be released, to slow things down a little bit. What are the big sets of questions for China and its ambitions? Hackers are stepping up their attacks to extort victims. Let's start with easy. Who's attacking? Here's a deeper understanding of what's happening. Prime Time with John Dickerson. Stream on the free CBS News app. You ready? A generation of kids opens up on CBS Reports. I just want to be like a regular kid. Their world, their struggles, their voices. What if I was white? A lot of people like to call names and make you feel ashamed for being proud of who you are. Now streaming gender. I did not realize that you could change your gender. Realizing how you feel. You can be a boy, sometimes you feel like a girl, sometimes you feel like both. Redefining who you are. Identify as trans. Gender fluid. Non-binary and queer. Is the idea of gender a thing of the past? And to be yourself always, no matter what anyone says, I love you. Are the kids all right? Gender, now streaming on the free CBS News app. When weather turns extreme. States from the plains to the northeast are bracing for more than two feet of heavy snow. Every second counts. This is a monster winter storm. CBS News and the Weather Channel bring you virtual weather technology. So advanced, so real. There's a wrinkle in the forecast, the accumulating ice. Oh! You'll have time to get prepared. Take precautions before you head out. Feel the forecast on the CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. Stories that inform. Or you can be really old at 60, and you can be really young at 85. Inspire. How do we unlock the power within ourselves to be who we want to be? And brighten your day. The best part of fame is making people feel good. Always send the people home happy. Make every day a little more like Sunday morning. Here comes the sun. Stream now on the free CBS News app. been a pretty remarkable day. Thanks for staying with us here on CBS News. I'm Errol Barnett. And I'm Lana Zak. Here's a quick look at some of the top stories we're following. Another dramatic day on Capitol Hill where the House went through several more votes for Speaker. Lawmakers cannot be sworn in and the additional business of Congress cannot happen until a Speaker is selected. The family of Buffalo Bill star Damar Hamlin says doctors are lowering the amount of oxygen.